you want to achieve an actual good looking and natural film look, you have probably heard about the term halation. Halation is usually described as a red halo or red glow around the highlights. In this video I will show you why this is not correct, why the majority of tutorials online do not work if you want to achieve a static halation and I will show you a fantastic tool that does all of the things for you without breaking the bank. First, let's understand what halation actually is. To really get to the bottom of this, we need to decompose a film stock. So a plain film stock is still a three-dimensional object and we have multiple layers in here. If we think about it this way, with the camera lens being here and the back of the camera being here, there is the blue layer, the green layer, the red layer, those are the color layers in the film stock, then there is an anti-halation backing and then there is the back of the film stock right against the back of the camera. Halation usually occurs if you film or photograph a strong light source. This strong light source then, of course, goes through the lens and penetrates the film stock. And this is exactly where the magic lies, because if we truly want to understand the halation, we do need to follow the path of the light. So let's get rid of that arrow. A more correct representation would be this. Don't freak out, it's not very complicated. We have a strong light source that penetrates the film stock all the way onto the back of the film. Then the most energetic photons get bounced back and penetrate all the way towards the blue layer again. Then photons that are not that energetic bounce back and penetrate into the green layer and the least energetic photons penetrate only the red layer. And this is pretty much what's going on. From that we can derive the main characteristics of halation. If we have a look at the path of our light, we really can conclude that there must be a couple of things going on. So first, the most energetic photons get bounced back all the way to the blue layer. And if the red, the green and the blue layer are exposed, then the resulting image will be white. This means we need to see the enlargement of the light source. And this is our first main characteristic of actual good looking halation. We enlarge the light source. Next, let's follow the other light rays. So here we have a light ray that goes through the red layer into the green layer. This means the resulting color here must be orange, whereas the last light ray here only penetrates the red layer. This means that we only have a red glow out here. If we combine all of this, we now know that the gradient must go from red to orange to white. And this is our second main characteristic. The gradient of the halation needs to go from red to orange to white, with white being the enlargement of the light source. And last but not least, a film stock is not perfect, so there's always some light bouncing around, which means that our third main characteristic of halation needs to be a global, warm, natural glow of the image. This is usually described as global halation or just impurity of the film, because there are always photons bouncing around between the layers. With these three main characteristics in mind, let's have a look at a standard method for achieving halation and this is the method that you will find all across the internet. So let's have a look. Usually the instructions go like this. You have your original image and then you need to duplicate it on top of itself. Then you apply a threshold and basically a threshold just isolates the brightest parts of the image. So let's isolate the brightest parts and maybe smooth off the edges here a bit, something like this. Okay, now we isolated the brightest parts of the image. Next, we need some kind of channel blur because we only want to blur the red channel and then we can enable this and crank up the amount to something like this. I mean, this looks very cartoonish, but just to get my point across, this is how we are going to do this. Okay, and last but not least, the next thing you need to do, you need to set the blend mode to something like either screen, or lighten, or add, anything like this. You can see the light source stays as it is. So that's a bummer. Next, the color gradient. We do have a red glow around the highlights. Yes, that is correct, but it stays red throughout the entire process. So there is no orange glow around the brightest highlights. And last but not least, if I zoom out again, you can see if I enable and disable this layer. So this is before, this is after, and also we clip the highlights pretty badly here. I mean, this could be due to the blend mode. Let's set this to lighten a little bit less catastrophic. And then if we examine the entire image, you can see that there is actually no global warm glow going on. So if we take the characteristics of actual halation into consideration, you can see that this method is just inherently incorrect. We do not enlarge the light source. We do not achieve the halation gradient from red to orange to white. 
and we do not get this warm glow in our footage. I spent the last two years building a halation plugin for Final Cut Pro that does all of the heavy lifting for you. Let's have a look. For comparison's sake, we will use the same test image. So I go to here and enable my halation plugin. Right off the bat, you can see if I enable and disable this, there is this red glow in the mid-range or in the upper mid-range, and it actually looks quite pleasing. Next, to see what's going on a little bit better, I will change the strength to something like nuclear, so we can see what's going on. Now I will zoom in again, and we will examine the actual halation. So let's take the same spot here. First, right off the bat, you can see we actually do have this gradient. We go from red to orange to white. Now, let's have a look if we enlarge the light source. So this is before, and this is after, and also you can see how the light source gets a little bit larger. And just like that, you have actually good-looking and aesthetic halation. But since you want to use halation creatively to create the exact look or mood you're going for, you need some manual controls. So let's walk through the individual sliders and presets of this plugin. To do that, let's use two additional test images. So I'll zoom out again. And this is the first test image we will be using, and this is the second test image that we were using earlier in this video. Let's start with this one. I will enable the halation plugin, and I will zoom in to a point like that, I think somewhere around here, 400%. Yeah, this should be visible. Okay, the first thing I want to show you is the strength. So you don't have a plugin with a bazillion sliders, I just created some presets so everything is a bit more easy for you. By default, it's set to standard, and this is the kind of halation that you can find in most 35mm films. If you want to go a little bit less than that, then there is also subtle, which limits the halation even more. Let's go the other direction. Now we have standard, and then there is bold. You can see bold is already a bit stronger, but if you want to go all the way, there's also the nuclear preset. Next up, we have the mask mode. And if I turn on the mask mode, you can see very, very dimly these outlines of the shapes here in the test image. So let's fit this. To truly understand the mask mode, we need to understand the threshold and the source limiter. I will disable the source limiter all the way, and now we can see what the threshold is doing. This test image is not very good for this demonstration, so let's use the Luma map. So as you can see, the threshold allows you to include less of the entire image or more of the entire image. By default, it's set to a value of 70 because this gives you the most natural looking halation across the different presets. The source limiter decides how much of your actual light source is being tinted with the halation. If we increase the source limiter, you can see in the mask mode that the entire image gets a little bit darker and eventually we land on a black image. To show you this more intuitively, we should disable the mask mode. So I will go out of the mask mode and we will have a look at the entire image. So. This is the source limiter turned all the way down. You can see the highlights get tinted very, very strongly, and also the bleed into the highlights is a lot more intense. Let's zoom into this patch over there. If I now increase the source limiter, we exclude more and more of the brightest highlights from the consideration of the halation. The source limiter being turned up all the way ensures that the entire image remains neutral. By default, it's set to a value of zero, because this gives you a very natural warm glow throughout the entire film stock. You can also think of the source limiter as a way to control the diffusion. If you only want your halation to be around your highlights, then turn up the source limiter all the way and the halation will just be around your highlights. As you can see, if I turn up the source limiter, we limit the halation more and more to the actual light source. The other way around, if we decrease the source limiter, more and more of the film stock gets polluted with light. So if I decrease the source limiter, you can see how the entire image gets more and more affected by the global halation. Again, by default, this is set to zero, and you can go either way, depending on your creative intent. Next, let's zoom in again to this patch to the left there, and now we can talk about the hue slider. The hue slider just lets you control the hue of the halation. You can make it cooler or warmer, depending on your taste. You can also affect the saturation of the halation, so if you want to increase it, you can increase it, and if you want to decrease it, you can decrease it all the way, but I would not recommend this. I would always recommend that a little bit of color remains in the halation. Let's reset this. Last but not least, there is a boost slider. The boost slider just lets you boost the entire effect. So if you want even more of the halation, you can see how everything starts to really glow here. And if you want to decrease the strength of the effect, you can decrease the boost right here. Let's reset this. Now that we know how the plugin works, let's have a look at some real-world examples. First, let's have a look at this shot. 
You can see I have a general exposure adjustment on here and I also have a LUT because this shot is being filmed on a Blackmagic camera using the Blackmagic film profile which is just a log profile. So without the LUT the image would look flat like this and with the LUT we transform the color space from Blackmagic film generation 4 to Rec. 709. If we now want to add halation you always want to make sure that halation comes after the LUT. Remember in Final Cut Pro the signal flows from top to bottom with the input at the top and the output at the bottom. This means halation is being processed after the LUT. And this is what we want. The halation plugin requires a Rec. 709 image as its input. It also works with log footage but then you really need to fine tune your saturation and your threshold values. Generally speaking I would recommend placing the halation plugin after your color space transformation to Rec. 709. Okay and if we have a look at the image and zoom in now you can see that we have this really nice halation effect and we can also see how the lights bleed into the darker area. So this before and this is after and I think this looks fantastic. And we can also see that the items in the foreground don't get affected as much. There is still a bit of halation around here but it rolls off very very naturally towards the darker areas of the image. And just without changing anything I can play around with the different presets. So for example let's go with nuclear and you can see how everything looks amazing with this halation now. Let's zoom in again and go back here. So this is before and this is after. Again I think this just looks fantastic. Let's zoom out again. If we go to the next shot we do the same thing. We can apply the halation plugin onto this clip and by default it's set to standard as discussed before and now let's play around with some custom settings. So I think we want to zoom in here to like 100% so we can see what's going on and generally speaking this is before, this is after. You can see the headlights of the car get a little bit larger so this before again, this is after and you can also see that the sky in the background there to the left hand side um, all the way here gets a little bit more orange. But let's say you're very happy with your color grade and you don't want your sky to become orange. Now this is a case for the source limiter. We can just increase the source limiter to again limit the halation to the actual light sources. And if I now increase the source limiter you can see that this sky becomes less and less saturated in the background. So this before, this is after and you can see how it's almost completely gone. We can even change the preset to something like nuclear and you can see how this sky remains very neutral. So this before and this is after and you can see even though we set our preset to nuclear the halation effect is rather tamed because we increase the source limiter so much. So maybe let's dial that down just a bit more until the sky becomes just vaguely saturated and I think... Okay this would be too much. Um, let's park it at around like 45. Yeah, I think 45 is a good value for the source limiter for this image. Okay, and now let's have a look at the before and after in full screen. This is before and this is after. Again, this is before and this is after and we achieved all of this just by changing the preset and affecting one slider. This is what I meant earlier when I said this plugin does all of the heavy lifting for you. Moving on to the next clip, I mean no demonstration of a halation plugin would be complete without a subway station so let's apply the halation plugin one more time and again it's placed after the LUT because the signal flows from top to bottom in Final Cut Pro's inspector and now let's go for something more subtle in terms of the spread of the halation so let's choose a preset that works for us. I think this is a little bit too subtle for my taste so I will go with bold. Yeah, something like this. We can reduce the boost and we can also decrease the source limiter because I want my highlights to be really, really tinted. And maybe let's go into the mask mode and have a look at how much of the scene we actually affect. I think something, something like this should work out. And if we now have a look at the before and after. So this is before, this is after. Again, this is before, this is after. I think this just brings so much character to this shot. Last but not least I want to show you an example with a very strong light source which is just a very very brightly illuminated sky. So let's go to this shot and again here is the LUT. Before the LUT I just have a general exposure adjustment and now we can add the halation plugin. And right out of the box without changing anything you can see how everything looks much more natural. So this is before, this is after. I think halation does so much to an image.
but let's play around with these settings. In this clip, you can really see the source limiter in action one more time. So let's go to nuclear so we can actually see what's going on. If I drag the source limiter all the way to the left, you can see how the general image gets more warm and gets more orange. And also the brightest parts of our image become very, very tinted. However, if we drag the source limiter all the way up, you can see that everything stays rather neutral, but we can still make out a very natural looking halation around our main character. So this before, this is after, and I think this looks so natural. I said that like a million times now, but I really dig halation. <laughs> Okay, now let's reset the source limiter. Let's say we want to go for something a little bit more neutral. So I can maybe decrease the threshold just a touch, increase the source limiter so our highlights remain a little bit more natural. And I don't want to go full nuclear on the halation in this one. So maybe let's choose a different preset. I really do like the blooming around the brightest highlights though. I think something like bold. Still a little bit too much. Let's go with standard. Because as mentioned before, this is just your regular 35 millimeter film. But also I think the color of the elation could be a little bit cooler. So let's drag the hue to the left here just a bit. Something like seven, whoops, something like negative seven, I meant, would do the trick. And maybe, yeah, I think saturation and boost are where they need to be. And for the last time, let's have a look at the before and after. So this is before and this is after. Maybe the effect becomes more apparent in full screen. So this is before and this is after. If you're interested in this plugin, there is a link in the video description. And if you want to see more plugins for Final Cut Pro that make the impossible possible, make sure you're subscribed because there is a lot to come.